I'm, I'm referring to a Wallace, uh, mm. Daniel Wallace, Greek yeah. Grammar Beyond the Basics, pages mm -hmm. 40 through 41, where he defines the predicate nominative yeah. as two nominative nouns with, with state of verbs. Mm -hmm. And he gives two possible ways that uh, predicate nominative constructions can be um, interpreted, right? Yeah. So one, the first one he gives is this subset proposition, which is that the predicate identifies the category to which the subject belongs. Mm -hmm. And the second one is the, what he calls the convertible proposition where the predicate is identical to the subject. I mean, would you agree with, with Wallace that that's basically the two ways that a predicate nominative is used? I would say that the word was God. The, the no, God I'm not, there. I'm not there. I'm not in John one yet. I, oh, I just want to make sure that we agree on the standard that Wallace is, I mean, I, I know you taught Greek, so I, I know that, um, well, I have a degree in Greek for what it's worth from London yeah. university too. Okay. Um, it's, it's so difficult for the public, that proposition, they're not going to understand it anyway. So I don't think it's worth discussing for the public. The word was God, by the way, why have you got a capital W on word there? Well, that's, well, that's the way it's translated in most translations. Yes, but but I know, why? I know that's, why? I know that's open for discussion. It's a major point since the word yeah. was never a person in the old Testament ever, ever, ever. It's quite wrong to put a capital W on word. All right. Well, let's, let's go, let's, let's have it your way. Yeah, all right. And let's put a small W there, okay? Yes, please. Okay. So, I but I, I do want to talk about this clause, the word was God, yes. because because this is a predicate nominative. Yes. It fits uh, Wallace's description yes. as the subset proposition. Okay. Which means essentially that God is the category to which the word belongs in this particular I agree statement. with that. Of course, God's word is God speaking. Of course, it's to do with God. It's also emphatic. But it's not, you didn't mention that. Emphatic, the word was God and not somebody else. You've got to explain why is the God first there? Theos, I'm using a modern Greek pronunciation. Theos, yeah. enologos. The word was God and let's not ever imagine it was anybody, anybody else than God. And these are Unitarian People. Yes, but it's not the word was of God or God's. No. It's the word was God. This is a, this yeah. is a, a subset category here. This is, yeah. God, in other words, the word, whatever the word is, okay, mm -hmm. because that's what's in dispute between your view yeah. and my view. Of course. Okay. So whatever the word is in John mm. 1 1 and, and throughout mm. John, John 1 was God. Yeah. Not You're else. saying the word was a plan, which is an abstract thing. No, I'm it's not a, saying the word was a plan. I'm saying the word was God speaking. Logos has always not meant a person in all of the occurrences in the Hebrew Bible. So it's very odd suddenly to say that word is a person. But, I deny it's a person. I say it's a saying. It's God thinking, God having his wisdom and so on. His wisdom, right. which is not a person. Wisdom wasn't a person ever, nor was prudence, nor was Logos, a person in the Old Testament. Okay, Ar Anthony, your argument is essentially that word, the Logos, the, yes. the, the term word, mm. you're, what you're doing is you're interpreting the passage based on the lexical meaning of Logos. The occurrences of Logos in the Old Testament, I'm looking at the Hebrew. And, and well, how is, well, obviously, the lexical meaning is how it's used throughout yeah. the scriptures that yeah. the, that's the definition of the term logos is yeah. a word a message something that is communicated exactly. intelligently not a, not a person ever 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 okay now okay my point though mm -hmm. is that many terms many abstract terms like logos yes can be used as proper names right. in fact in revelation 19 it's talking about christ it says his name is called logos of god you've got one occasion you've got none other than that in the whole bible okay all right but my point is on that one occasion okay. which is which is in, in the book of revelation which is portrayed as the revelation of jesus christ that is christ being revealed yes. he, he is revealed there as the logos of god and it's called his name my point is that my point is that if the logos is Christ's name, which it clearly is in that mm -hmm. passage in Revelation yes. uh, 19, then there is nothing wrong with importing that idea into John 1. It's, both books are written by the same guy. So if logos mm -hmm. is a name, then there is no problem with using an abstract term as a name for a person. No, that's wrong. With respect, that's wrong because the word became flesh. It wasn't human until it became any more than the wine was wine 
until it became wine. Well, that's exactly you're what I'm saying. That, you're missing missing that transition. No, no became, I'm not missing. The, I'm not missing the transition because in in verse 14, where it says the word yes. became flesh, I'm saying that Logos was the pre-existing Son of God who became flesh. So there was a transformation from him being as divine as God's yes. divine Son to his being not no longer divine in his nature, but now he is totally human in his nature. Yeah, so Logos is, became is still, flesh. Still a person. My fundamental disagreement with you is that Logos was a person in the Old Testament times. That's no evidence of that no, at all. I'm not saying Logos was portrayed as a person in the Old Testament times. What I'm saying is that in John chapter one, in the yeah. prologue, yes. Logos is a person. And he's a person because, for, not because of the term logos that's simply being used as a name for a person but the but this clause lo, uh, logos or the word was god mm -hmm. theos ain ha logos yes. means as in a predicate nominative construction he is logos is being portrayed as god in the subset position in yes. this predicate nominative, yes. nominative construction yes. god is the category to which the word belongs course, so it's not another person than god but, but, you're making that okay. that slip that you're it, missing my point i think you're missing my point anthony you're saying that the in the beginning was the second member not of a trinity no, no i'm not that. you're saying what i'm saying jesus, though. in the beginning okay. was jesus right i'm the saying well i wouldn't call him jesus because he wasn't called jesus back right, then. What would you he call was only him named precisely who? i would call him god's son and i would call him okay. wisdom because that's a term that's applied to him i would call him the messenger of yahweh yes. because that's a term that's applied to him which also could so. mean the angel of yahweh right well it's it's translated angel of Yahweh, but I don't think angel is a very good term to translate that because it can the word angel in English conveys a type of being, but that's not what the original languages do. So what is your term then for? I'm trying to identify this person clearly. It sounds to me you're talking about a spirit being of some sort. Not, well, not obviously God, God, God is busy. John. John four says God is spirit. Jesus said that God is spirit. In other words, He's not a material thing. Right. like we are god is spirit so if god begets a son at the beginning of creation then that son would also be whatever spirit means that god is spirit that son would also have to be spirit in that sense so you've got so two spirits there i'm saying that i'm saying that we have two persons who are spirit which is once two god, spirits isn't it we're back in the, this is the trinitarians no argument well the three is really one and isn't i mean we're in that sort well of I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not arguing based on trinitarian presuppositions no, but at the all. argument I, is the same you've got two each one is a spirit and it's only one spirit i'm saying we have two persons yeah and the well, way I, that if you want to know what are these persons yes, i do that they're described as by the term spirit because that's sort of a very ambiguous uh kind of a term so if you want to call it two spirits or if you want to call it um uh just both consist of spirit whatever that means um, I'll go either way. I don't. It's not really an important point that, okay. that I'm trying to make. Let me get back to my point, though, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. The phrase and the word was God. This is mm -hmm. this is a predicate nominative construction. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, even though the term word logos means um, normally is something that is abstract, say, not something not that say. is concrete. Right. And normally it, that's yeah. normally its sense. I'm saying it can be used as a personal name of something or someone who is a concrete a noun, right? That is God's son. It can be used as a proper name and it is used as a proper name for Jesus in Revelation. In John 1.1, 1, 1, you're saying it's a person. I'm, I'm saying, name for Jesus. let me tell you why it's a person in John 1.1. 1, 1. Yes, okay. All right. I'm, I'm simply, I only quoted uh, from Revelation 19 to show yeah. that of it's course. used as a proper name for Christ in that passage. All right. In this passage, I'm not saying it must be a name just because it's got a capital W. I'm saying it's a name because of the whole predicate nominative construction. When it says Logos was God, the word God is a concrete noun. It's not an yeah. abstract noun. No. The word God is a personal noun. The word God throughout the entire Bible refers to some of person. Course. And so the word was was also some person. You've got two persons, both of whom are God. I just what heard you say. Yes, both are called God. Yes. Wait a minute. And why, but, but why is the second person called God? Because yeah. he's the messenger of God who is also called God. That's all two throughout gods. The Old That's two gods. 
No, it's two person. Do you have do you have two gods in Psalm forty five, six and seven, where it says your throne, O God, is forever and ever? Of course you do, but one, they're not at the same level. Second I agree, God and I, I I will say the same thing about okay. this passage. So the word was God. It's actually emphatic. The word was God, and not yes. something else. Not a quality God a of God. Secondary sense. Is that it? I'm saying the word was God because the word God is a concrete noun. The, the word here is not a plan. The word is not an idea in God's mind. The word is, was God in the same sense that the Old Testament uses the word God for the messenger of Yahweh. <laughs>